Is 4 to the x plus y equal to 8 to the 10th? Well, we do not want to have to multiply all this out. We'd like to be able to simplify this prompt a little bit. As it turns out, both 4 and 8 are powers of 2. 4 equals 2 to the second, 8 equals 2 to the third. And so we can plug this in and simplify. So what we get instead of 4 to the x plus y, that's 2 squared to the power of x plus y equals 2 cubed to the power of 10. Well, now we use that fabulous law of ratios of, of exponents that says if we have a to the m to the n, what that equals is a to the m times n. And if laws of exponents are something that are unfamiliar to you, it's been a long time since you've dealt with them, and they're a bit rusty, I'd highly recommend check out Magoosh. Magoosh has over 200 videos to help you prepare for the GMAT, content videos and strategy videos in both math and verbal, including videos that will tell you everything you need to know about the laws of exponents. So continuing here, we multiply the exponents, and what we get is 2 to the, I'll just write it as 2 times x plus y equals 2 to the 30th. Well, now that the bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal. 2, to the x, 2 times x plus y equals 30. And divide by 2, what we get is x plus y equals 15. So this original expression is totally equivalent to the to the, to the equation x plus y equals 15. And that's really the question. Do, do x plus y add up to 15? Well, now, statement number one tells us that x minus y is 9. Well, it certainly is possible there are some numbers where that have a difference of 9 and a sum of 15, and there are others that have a difference of 9 and do not add up to 15. So knowing this, we have no way of knowing whether x plus y is 15. So this by itself is insufficient. Statement number 2 tells us that y over x equals 1 quarter. Well, again, what we have, we just have one equation that we know, and two unknowns, so we have no way of solving, since we have one equation and two unknowns. There's plenty of numbers where y over x would be equal to fourth, and they would not add up to 15, but it is possible to create two numbers that have a ratio of one-fourth, and they do equal 15. So, in other words, there's no way to decide, just on the basis of this, question, this statement, whether the prompt question can be answered or not. So, this statement is insufficient. Now, if we combine the two statements, well, now what we have, x minus y equals 9, y over x equals 1 fourth. We have two equations and two unknowns. When you have two equations and two unknowns, you're able to solve for the value of y and x. So we don't actually have to go through the work of solving here since this is data sufficiency. All we have to do is just know that we could solve for them. As it happens, the values that you would get is x equals 12 and y equals 3, and they do add up to 15. But whatever values we're able to solve for, you, you would then be able to answer the question whether they add up to 15. And so together, the statements are sufficient, which means the answer to the question is C.